You know, putting this all together, I think that electronic music has a little bit of a, a problem because I think a lot of people that come, like myself, come from uh, playing in bands. I played in doom metal bands and industrial bands and metal bands. And we like to be physical with our instruments. Nobody wants to sit up there and keep their hands in at their side. You know, you, don't, you work at a computer all day. You don't want to do that when you're on stage. And so I, I had this problem is like, how do I stand there uh, with a guitar and press buttons and have this sequence running. And I just happened to be in art school and building sculpture at the same time. And I said, hmm, I wonder if I could make a sculpture uh, or basically a large instrument that would control pitch. And I made a large pitch controller with a lever, almost like, a, like you're on an airplane, it's got the throttle. I called it the throttles. It controlled the pitch, it was really simple. And from there I pretty much just said, hey, what other ways can I control every aspect of the sound uh, manually, live. You know, if I'm not touching something, you're not hearing something. Uh, and from there, I just started building all these instruments, very physical. To move again. All right, so basically this is a new setup, and uh, at Moogfest this was the very first performance on this set of instruments. Other than the microphone and the throat mic, everything that is here is something that I've created in the last year. Um, same idea, I've got a rhythm controller that I play with my right hand. Uh, this is the third revision of this, uh, uh, it was a linear actuator, then there was one called rails, and then this one's called gridiron because it uses a like basically a grid of different textures. Uh, it's got eight buttons on it. Uh, it's got a grid of different textures and a stylus that basically can ride over different grooves and has an encoder that will trigger those positions. So it's almost like when you drag your hand against a fence that has rings on it and you Just anything that you would feel the textures, you can make rhythms out of those textures. So I've machined different uh, textures in different strips here so I can through my set, I can experiment with different, uh, different textures. I'll get into a little bit more about that later, but that's the general idea. Uh, this instrument is a, uh, the second revision, it's a pitch controller, um, and basically what that is is, just takes a, a synthesizer or a software synth, and I change the pitch. Um, a lot of times, keyboards, uh, I have fixed positions and fixed tones, so you're stuck with an octave um, with fixed notes. I wanted to be able to, you know, almost like a fretless bass, go in between the pitches. Um, but for electronic music, you know, a lot of times you got a little pitch bend, but you're not going to be playing that very accurately. Like, but this one I can go. Um, so that's something that I feel is pretty valuable to, especially making heavy music, is finding those places in between and crossing over pitches. Uh, so the combination of these two things together, right hand, left hand, you know. You know, basically I don't have to play to a MIDI uh, click or anything. I can, but I can basically kind of create the rhythm in the, in the tempo on my own. I'm not stuck within 16 beats on a normal drum machine. So for me that was the whole idea of you know why I built these instruments is so I could get out of MIDI land and out of uh, uh, these like fixed tempos. So I'll just I'll go through this a little bit more and then I can talk about kind of how I got here. Um, I've built several versions of big knobs. They're just big knobs. They're smaller than small knobs. You do a lot of knob twiddling and I basically wanted something that was not this, that basically had weight. This is a solid piece of aluminum. It's got like inertia. I can really feel that, you know? And so it takes a little bit of, takes a little bit of force to stop it from spinning. Keep spinning forever. 
So basically for this, I can map these three knobs to any parameter in software that I want. And I've got a filter hooked up to this one which goes from low to high frequencies. So here's the audio, here's the audio clip clean. This is a delay so I can just make it all like, you know, have a very long, I don't have to play it, it'll just keep repeating. So. So there's the, there's the clip, you can hear the clip. I believe this is from, I don't want to tell what it's from, but it's from some classical music, some, some vocal part, so I can go. And then I can just turn the filter over and just make it warble bass. So just with these, these things being larger, you know, I think if these were small knobs, you wouldn't be able to let that play and just keep spinning like that. So, you know, you have good ball bearings in there and things like that. It allows you to, like, use the instrument more as an instrument like you would a guitar. You know, a little knob like this, you can't do that kind of thing. Um, and lastly, lastly, this is probably, like, the newest. I've never built one of these before. Uh, I call this one the ingot. It's kind of hidden in here, but it's basically a big, it's a disc, and I wanted to have a single piece of metal that you could spin and also slide. And so, and you, you have to encode, encode that information, so. Um, this was probably the hardest one for me to make just because of the technical ability to put two encoders on it, one for lengthwise and one for, uh, for the spinning. Uh, so that's a little bit of like the overview of what all these instruments do. Uh, and finally, microphone. Uh, this is basically a, uh, I wanted to have a microphone where I, because I'm, I'm using my hands and I'm only one person. I want to be able to use my voice. You always got your voice available to you. So, you got one, you got one, you got one. Let me just change the track up here so you can hear it a little bit better. All right, so. So I put a different effect on each microphone. So I'm only using four, there's eight of them, but I'm only using four. But they're also act as MIDI controllers. So the harder I blow, the louder I speak. So you can hear there's a cymbal swell there. So I'm having it trigger some cymbals. As I'm screaming, I can have this like cymbal swell. So it's like ultimate black metal situation. All right, finally, to get the full uh, effect from, your uh, from the voice, I found that if you put piezos on your throat, uh, this is something that the military uh, uses when they're underwater so they can talk. They actually strap a uh, microphone onto their throat so like Navy SEALs can like talk while they're underwater because you can't hear yourself talk underwater. So if you get it right on your throat, right on your trachea and you push it really hard, you get this kind of like picks up the bass frequencies that I've found. So that is all the instruments. Um, technically, what this does is they're controllers. You can, you can use controllers that are basically interfaces for synthesizers or software. Uh, software, something like Ableton Live, um, you can basically send it MIDI information and it'll control its synths. That's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, it's the same as a MIDI keyboard you know, maybe like an APC or a push controller. Same kind of thing, I've just made it custom.
the cool thing now that I feel like I'm doing is they've, they've made it a lot easier to send these signals through a computer out to hardware synthesizers. Then you get like the full effect of like bass and the analog sound. So I've also got it going out to some electron gear for some of the synths and drum machines. And technically, these are all open source. Like everything that's on here is either, you know, I have made or ordered like little parts, 3D printed, and Arduino is the, like a Raspberry Pi Arduino is what's at the core. And so all this information, like this positional information, um, that pitch information coming off of linear encoders uh, is going into an Arduino, which is then takes that information and sends MIDI back to the computer. It's a really simple setup. That's it, technically. Uh, machined on CNC machines uh, and 3D printers. And it's really important for me that this stuff is open source so that people know that they can go and make this stuff on their own.